apparently Shrek originally had a Canadian accent and then Mike Myers saw a rough cut of the film and decided that the Scottish accent would be better. And that tiny change cost four to five million US dollars in reshoots. Now don't get me wrong, I love Shrek's accent. I think it's great. It's probably a contributor to the film's success. But the cost of the reshoots is astonishing. And I can't help but wonder, what if they had spent a bit more time exploring options in the character's voice before they started filming? Because changing the accent in pre-production costs nothing. Changing the accent after the first draft of the film costs five million dollars. <laughs> So that brings us on to this idea of thrashing, and hat tip goes to Seth Godin and Steve McConnell for the idea. So now thrashing is a, a technique used by software project managers that can be applied and greatly benefit creative projects. Right? And what it means to thrash is to do a bit more thinking, to do a bit, spend a bit more time in the thinking phase, so you spend less time in the executing phase. So let's take filmmaking, for example. Let's say that you're the director and you're filming, today you're filming a scene in a park, right? And you're only showing up to the venue for the first time today, right? And so you're looking around, right? You're trying to find the coolest features of the setting. You're trying to see the best lighting. You're trying to look at the script to see what part of the script needs to be emphasized. Um, you're, you're, you're trying to work out where is the best place for the camera to, to sit and all the while the entire cast and crew are standing there waiting to be told what to do. It's not very good productivity, it's not very good use of studio resources because one person's working and there's 50 to 100 people waiting to be told what to do, right? That the studio is paying money for the equipment possibly millions that is just sitting there not being used. They are paying money for the space that is not being used yet. It's not very effective, right? And if you contrast that with say a director who visited the venue before filming started and thrashed out a plan. They show up to set and they go, okay, we're gonna film this scene three times, right? We're gonna use two cameras. Camera one is gonna be situated over there. Camera two is gonna be situated over there. The purpose of camera one is to follow the hero around. Purpose of camera two is to zoom on the hero when he says these words. Now, the best lighting is gonna have to follow camera one. I don't mind about camera two, don't worry about that. If it rains, we're gonna go ahead anyway. Now, action. So the, the point I'm trying to get to is problem solving is much more fun and a lot easier when there's no cost and time pressure. You're less likely to be overwhelmed and have a meltdown when it's just you in the park exploring possibilities. No time pressure, no cost pressure at all. You know, and you're less likely to find a solution you're happy with when all you're doing is reacting to the stress of tearing your hair out about how much money you're spending and how little time you have. The other benefit that thrashing offers is that you're more likely to deliver a project that you're happy with. For example, The Lone Ranger is a movie with Johnny Depp and Army Hammer, um, and it's spent so much, so quickly, that they had to cut out huge portions of the movie just to stay under budget and keep to the deadline. Now, can you imagine if you were the creator or the filmmaker or someone who poured their heart and soul into this story, right? Only for huge chunks of it to be taken out or glossed over, and yet your name is still going to be attached to that project. And so you may have written a story that you're really proud of, and then people go and watch the movie and they judge you on a story that you are not proud of, right? And when you're thrashing it out, when you're thrashing out and you're using that technique, it's much more likely you're gonna deliver a project that you're happy with. Another example of 
terrible thrashing is the movie Wet Hot American Summer, right? Now, this movie was entirely based on the premise of an extremely hot American summer, right? And when they went to film, it was pouring rain. Now, granted, that's unusual, but the film crew did not have a backup plan for what if it was raining, right? They didn't have a, a CGI studio booked to, to create some artificial sun, right? Now, that is poor planning. Now, granted, it's in the summer, it's unlikely, but also, if they had a backup plan ready, they could have saved a fortune, saved a huge amount of headache, and probably created a film that they were more happy with. Now, you can't anticipate everything. You know, unexpected stuff will arise. So, my kind of rule of thumb, or my advice would be to anticipate as much as possible and be ready to adapt in the moment. Know what's a priority, know what you're willing to cut, are you willing to shoot anyway, even if it's, even if weather is not permitting. And that's all for me today. Hope it helps, hope it was insightful. Have a great day.